hi and um, welcome back to another video so today's video i have eric here again uh, the survey i spoke with some time back and today i'm going to be talking about indentures so without not talking further let's just go ahead and get into it so eric uh welcome thank again. you good to have you again. again yes so today's video i want us to talk about <coughs> indentures okay yes yeah, so what exactly is an indenture so simply put an indenture is a document that outlines a contract between a purchaser and a seller, a lessee or a lesser, a gifter or a gifter. So it's simply an agreement or contract between two people transacting over land. Let me put it this way, because that is in contest. Okay. Yeah. So who <coughs> is qualified to make or prepare an indenture? So yeah, this issue about indenture, I think, has, uh, has sparked a lot of, you know, uh, arguments. The right people or the right personnel to draft an indenture should be a lawyer, a qualified lawyer. So what happens is, uh, at the start of land purchase or any land transaction, you should make sure that if you have the means, should involve a lawyer. But you know, all some of all these things, we've overlooked them over years and it has become a norm that, okay, when you're ready to buy land, you just pick your money, go find the land and you buy. But the best practice is to involve a lawyer because he's going to help you along the line, explain certain things to you. So he's the best person. But currently, there are other people who create or draft the indentures. They use the templates normally created by the lawyers. So, and the problem with that is they are not able to customize those templates to suit uh, the individual transactions. So, I would put it this way. No two transactions of land normally are the same. Because the terms that we spell out or the terms that a buyer and the seller will bring out normally will be the same. Only for the fact that it should be within the framework of the constitution or the law of the land that governs land purchase. Okay. Yeah. That is a very detailed uh, info yeah. in there. So <coughs> one we ask, what are some of the information that is supposed to be contained in an indenture? Okay. So for an indenture like this, you need details, first of all, details of the one buying the land and the one selling the land. So details like your name, uh, your address, and other details about you to make sure that it is unique for you, not any other person. So you have those two details. And normally that is contained in the first page. So when you look at the first page, you would... Uh, you find the names and uh, details of the one who is selling the land. If it's a company, an individual, a family, whatever. They, you find their names there. And the one buying the land to, you also find uh, that person's name. The next thing you find is details about the land. So <coughs> there may be virgin lands or free lands. That's how sometimes we term it. And the land may also be a registered land. So in all these cases, you're supposed to find details about it, where it lies. If there's been any court issues on the land, it should come in. If there's been multiple sales, multiple sales not in the sense that someone sold it to multiple people, but the successions of the ownerships. So let's say the Alodia owner was Kofia Sante, he sold it to Yao Mensa, Yao Mensa sold it to uh, Ama Siedria. You have to find those successions. So that is the history of the land you have to find it there and uh, i think the next one <coughs> will be the agreement the buyer and the seller the lesser or the lessee would make that is also contained in there so that is the uh, some of the information yeah some of the information what about the, the <coughs> land itself like the plan or the 
layout to another side. Okay, another so area. we call it a cadastral document. So when we talk of the cadastral document, you are talking of the cadastral plan. So again, there are a lot of different types of plans. For any land transaction, you should make sure <coughs> you have uh, the cadastral plan. You may be given a layout plan, but on top of it, you should do a cadastral plan. You may be given a site plan, you should do a cadastral plan. You sometimes may be given a certified plan. You should still go ahead and do your cadastral plan. That is what is recognized by Lands Commission. So you have your cadastral plan like this. This is actually a layout plan. Okay. But we have a cadastral plan. You should have this and this. So this is your cadastral plan and uh, this is your indenture. The two come together to give you a cadastral document. document. So the document itself, the indenture talks about this plus the people involved in the transaction. So it talks about this. Because first of all, land is an immovable object. Yeah. So you have the details of it picked and uh, scaled onto a paper. So on it, you find the name, the locality, the district, the region, and uh, the coordinates of the, 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 the parcel or land you are talking about. So those details are included in the contract agreement because that is the center of the contract. So, okay. Yeah. So, considering that all these information mm -hmm. are provided in the indenture, what then should happen? So, between the buyer and the seller, I believe they are supposed to sign to it. So, in a case where, for instance, let's say estate companies provide an indenture on the part of the seller before, so on the part of the buyer before signing to it, what should be some of the things the, sell, uh, the buyer would have to look out for before appending their signature to So I think I'll take you back with that question. As I said earlier, right from the beginning of uh, the transaction itself, you should make sure you involve a lawyer. Or at least you, you, you should get a surveyor, someone who is not well versed only in the technical survey itself, but a bit about the law aspect of the land, at least. But the, the best thing is to involve a lawyer. So what the lawyer will do with this transaction is he's going to you know uh, help you to get terms and conditions that is going to favor you if you leave that to just the seller he's just going to make sure the conditions he spells out favors him and that is also a problem i have with most buyers they go to the transaction table I don't know whether to call it a victim mentality or with a mentality that the one selling the land is trying to favor them. It's never like that. It's always an exchange of value. You are bringing a value in monetary terms. He's bringing a value in land. So if you have a say, it's not like he's going to spoon feed you as to what he wants and what he doesn't want. You should have a say. Because there are a lot of terms that are spelled out. In some of these documents some maybe when you buy the land even the plan that you have to use to build the land you have to submit it for them to approve of it sometimes you are giving terms that after buying the land for two years if you don't develop it they can enter the land again resell it or reallocate it to another person so all of these things you should make sure that it, it doesn't just favor the one selling the land to you it favors you also so the negotiation table normally when we go sit down it's more about oh how much i oh decrease the price okay no it shouldn't just be about it should be about the terms that governs the sale of that particular parcel of land and you should have a say because you are using your hard-earned money to make that purchase you are not being favored by the one who is selling the land Okay. So, yeah. so what are some of the mistakes land buyers make aside some of the few that you've mentioned when it comes to the documentation aspect that you think it doesn't have to be so? So some of the mi mistakes I'll reiterate you have to be involved in the 
documentation, the indenture, the contract. You have to have a say in it. So uh, the indenture should be, shouldn't be in a way that the person, normally the real estate companies, they have a draft that when you buy, they just hand it over to you. It shouldn't be the case. You should make sure that what they bring to you, you look through with your lawyer or with your surveyor and make sure that whatever you have in it suits what you want or it's okay with you. So th that is one thing you should, you should look at. And don't just sign any document without really understanding it. It happens a lot. They'll bring the document. Oh, you are supposed to sign this part. Your witnesses are supposed to sign this part. You just sign it and without even having a look at what has been presented to you. So I see most of the indentures we have now that have been signed, registered as traps set by sellers, real estate agents, families, and just for their clients to fall a victim. And if you do fall a victim to something that you've already appended your signature to, it will be very difficult for your lawyer to help you because you are supposed to be vigilant. You are supposed to actually look through before you append that signature. Because appending your signature means you agree to whatever you have in this document. So you shouldn't sign this and later go and be like, a man who are there we will to wait. I've seen this thing in it and me I don't understand. If you don't understand, don't sign. You have all the time for yourself to understand it. So that is one mistake. People don't re really read the indenture. No two indentures, I would say, are supposed to be the same. But we've made it the, the case that, oh, indenture, there's a pair. It's never the same. Just that each and every indenture has to be made or drafted to fit or to be under the framework of the laws that govern land ownership, purchase, transaction, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I think recently we were going through one indenture where I think the the buyer who happened to be an uh, no the seller who happened to be an estate company mm -hmm. was given a lease period of ninety nine years mm -hmm. to the buyer. And when going through the document we will notice that the land itself was leased to uh, the now seller of mm -hmm. the land. And we know by Ghana laws where when you lease land it's just up to a maximum of ninety nine years. So far as you are a citizen yeah so what do you have saying to okay that? so with that it also goes back to the you see the whole transaction the beginning of it how you start normally is how you end it who you involved in the earlier stages uh, the knowledge you have all is going to play out to the end so there are some estate companies just as i said they have this draft so when someone just comes, they just produce it, give it to you. It's not the case. Uh, when you do a search on a land, I think we had an is a same situation days ago about a client who went ahead to buy a land and uh, later found out from the set that uh, the land was, was leased to the owner he was buying the land from, I think, 20 years ago. And uh, he was buying it now. What happens then is you are entitled to the rest of the person's lease period because he is not an Alodia owner. He bought it from an Alodia owner. Alodia owner means a bona fide owner. He bought it from them. So he doesn't have the right to give you another 99 years after time has elapsed on the agreement he had with the Alodia owners. So this, this is the reason why every land you want to buy, try and conduct a search, especially when the land is registered. Reach through the results that will come. Make sure you understand. If you don't, contact a lawyer or at least a surveyor who knows about these things and make sure he explains it to, he or she explains it to your understanding. But there are a lot of lands you go and buy about 30 years have elapsed before you go to buy it. So all these things have to come to perspective and be presented on the negotiation table 
without this knowledge, you just go to the negotiation table and you just accept anything because you are not privy to all the knowledge about the land. You should be privy to it before you enter the negotiation table. Never start land transaction with price. Make sure you have all your details right, all your information right. Whatever you're supposed to have, know, make sure you have it before you sit down with the one selling the land to you. Then you are armed with the ample knowledge you have to better negotiate, not just price, but the terms of engagement. It's also important. Okay, so let's assume that uh, an indenture has gone through all these processes, everything is okay, both parties have signed. What then happens to it? So the next stage, uh, I think earlier on in my explanation about the transaction, I said, all the three arms of government are involved in this land transaction because the parliamentarians or the legislature arm of government who create the laws that governs the land. I think recently we were here and we were told now you can't own land forever. It was created by the legislation and now the judiciary, you know, also coming and the uh, executive also come in. So the legislature comes in with the, and, uh, the laws and enactments. The judiciary comes in with the interpretations and all that. And the executive comes into this because they are the custodian. Or let me say he is because normally it's the executive, the head, the president, he or she is the custodian of all lands in Ghana. So he comes in through the Lands Commission. So after this document has been created, you've signed it, your witnesses have signed it, it goes to the judiciary. You send it to the registrar. He has to look through, stamp and sign for a fee. Then it moves from there to Lands Commission. That is the executive arm for them to officially give you the note. Even though you've bought it, if uh, you are not giving the nod, it is not a complete. What happens is you are not uh, you are not having absolute ownership or protection of that land because it's not recognized by all these three arms of government. So they all have to come together to make sure uh, you own the land. Yeah. So uh, why is it the case that? Sometimes some of these documents have flaws in them, but when it go to the legislation aspect or the court for approval, they go ahead to approve it. So, uh, my answer to that will be: uh, it's your first of all your property. It's first of all your property before any other person. So, you should make sure that whatever it is in the document that. They are going to sign against it. They are going to stamp against it. You are okay with it. You don't leave that to someone to, you know, because probably he didn't go through the trial you went through to get the money or the resources to purchase that land. So as much as they might do it, even though there are flaws in it, I think the first responsibility lies with you, not them. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, we've said enough for mm-hmm. some information, giving some information yeah. about the indenture. I don't know if there's any other thing you'd want to add to it at this point. Uh, okay, so I think quickly I'll try to go through. Uh, as I said, first you need the details of the one selling, the one buying, then details about the land itself, the successions, the ownership, any court issues, sometimes uh, loan, it all comes in, surrender, everything. Then you go to the agreement, and uh, then the w- one of it is the agreement you, the one buying the land, makes with the one who is selling it to you. The other side is the one selling the land also has an agreement he makes with you. So with your agreement, you should make sure that it's, it's trying to favor you. Of course, the one selling it to you would also make sure that whatever agreement he puts for it, favors him, just that it should be in the, under the framework of the laws of the land. So uh, let me just go through 
this he said this is the lessee hereby covenant with the lesser so the one who is giving the land uh, had covenant with the lesser as follows uh, to develop or substantially develop the property within a stipulated time and approved plan or scheme. What this means is, uh, even after you've paid your hard-earned money to buy the land, they are still giving you uh, an ample time to develop, without which they can, you know, abrogate the contract or cancel it. Because you, 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 you have to read through all this before the signature part comes. That's why it comes to the latter parts of the whole document. With the knowledge that you have to go through. So you may go and buy a land and you are taught is, oh, I'm just keeping it. Ten years time, I'll sell it. But the document tells you you have to develop the property within a certain time. Which, if you don't, and the, 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 the owner tries to take you on, it will be difficult for you because you have appended your signature to it. That is the reason why there is a need to make sure all the agreements. Uh, boss, I think with this one, I can. Can you actually, you know, increase the time frame? Two years, I don't think I'll have the resources. Make it like 10 years, make it seven years. Then, if I don't, you have the... Yeah. So the second one is to pay rent for the land. Mind you, you are not buying the land outright. You are just leasing, leasing it. So there is a yearly rent that you know you have to pay. So even with that, you also have a say. They can mention an amount, you mention an amount, but you also have a say. Yeah. The next one is to pay all rates, taxes and assessments imposed in the demise process. So sometimes when you buy this land, even when you build your, your house, property rate, you should pay it because now you are occupying it within that time frame. Yeah. And uh, to abide by all present or future covenant conditions, bylaws, easement, restrictions, rules or regulations here and after called covenant that may be attached to the estate as any of the same may be amended from time to time. The lessee acknowledges and accepts that the property is intended to be part of an estate. So in this case, it was an estate, you know, company trying to se sell the land to. Uh, there is a future term that you said you should abide by it. So I think even with all this, you should have a say. So what if in the future they tell you, okay, uh, so, so, and so, uh, we are changing it. And it doesn't favor you. But they've created a condition already. So you should have a say. If anything it changes and it doesn't favor you, then you may be at the right end. And it won't help. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think <laughs> we don't say you can read everything in the document. Yeah. But I think you've said it now. Um, one more question I wanted to ask is that um, of what importance does mm -hmm. this document hold? I'm saying this in the sense that can you take a loan with this document? What else can, what are the things you can do with this document when you have it? So this document gives you the right to own the land you have used your money to buy. It gives you that right, first off. When you register it, it can give you the opportunity to take certain facilities from, you know, banks. Because land is uh, an investment, a capital which you can use in exchange for a, for a facility from the bank. So some of, some, some of these things are the uh, benefits or the opportunities you have when you own one of these. Okay. So you just have to make sure it is done right sure. so that you can enjoy all these benefits that I have right. before mentioned. Okay. Yeah. That, that is, can you um, use it and obtain a building permit? Sure. Okay. So as I said, without owning the land, you can't build on it. Without this, you can't. can't. So there are certain assemblies, when you go there for your uh, land permit, they will ask you for your layout plan to make sure it conforms to the layout they have for that area. They will also ask you for a copy of this document. So in two ways, if you have registered it, you just send a copy of this, your building document, and you start your permit process. If you haven't registered it, the listing the request is it should be signed 
by both parties and send it to court that is the list and you should also attach a copy of uh, your search official search results to it to make sure the one who is selling the land to you is the one defined on the official search, search. be the company or an individual or a stool okay. you should make sure it corresponds all right yeah okay eric uh, thank you very much for this information you've shared i'm sure a lot of people would want more information yeah. and they might want to reach out so are you able to share your contact so that people can contact you and then you can assist them yeah okay so the contact is zero two four three five seven eight two four one zero two four three five seven eight two four one all right okay yeah. thank you very much You're welcome